Hello everyone, welcome to my laundry room. This may seem like a pretty boring room of the house, but in my house it's got, as you can see, quite a bit of stuff going on here. So one of the home automation projects that was really easy and really cheap for me to set up was software-defined radio with RTL-433. And what RTL-433 does is it decodes traffic from 433 megahertz sensors. And it does this using a very cheap USB TV tuner, essentially. So unfortunately, since I've set this up, it's become very hard to buy Raspberry Pis. And that's why today I'm going to use a cheap thin client from eBay instead. So for under a hundred bucks, all included, I'm going to be able to read all of my 433 megahertz sensors, and they themselves are pretty cheap too. So if you already have some of these sensors, or you're looking for sensors that are rugged enough to survive outside, this is a really cheap way to go, and I love using this to augment my Zigbee and Z-Wave networks. So what kind of hardware do we need to make this wizardry work? Most important thing we need is a software-defined radio specifically an RTL SDR. So what is a software-defined radio? Well, basically, in short, unlike most radios, which use a lot of RF magic to decode different protocols, software-defined radios basically just sample the RF signal and let the computer process it and figure out what it means. And that means we can write different programs for the computer to make it decode any protocol with a narrow enough bandwidth that the SDR is able to sample it. The software we're going to be using is called RTL-433, and it's designed specifically for all of these low-cost, off-the-shelf sensors. It has built-in decoders for things like the AccuRite outdoor temperature and humidity sensors I'm using. If you have any of those low-cost weather stations, or maybe even a clock with built-in weather that has an outdoor sensor, those kinds of things tend to use 433 megahertz with no encryption at all. They just talk to each other. So one thing you'll learn, too, is how many of your neighbors have weather stations. They'll all show up. So here's where I have a sensor outside. It's been out here for over a year now. Haven't changed the batteries on it yet. Still going strong. Just zip tied it around next to your light. That's it. So we have the SDR, and if you buy the kit, it comes with an antenna. Not a very good one, but that's okay, that's fine. So what do we do to get this reading data and sending it to Home Assistant? That's where this comes in. So you could use a Raspberry Pi, and I've used a Raspberry Pi in the past, but they're just so hard to find now. So, I'm going to try this Dell Wise 3040 Thin Client. I think that between the cost of this and this, I can keep the cost under my $100 target and have a pretty great setup. I have done a power mod to this, which you can see in my other video, link up there. So I can power it from a USB brick. This will be able to supply enough power to just plug the dongle into the front of it. And then, basically that's all you need for hardware setup. You need, you need Ethernet too. Software side is pretty simple too, so let's jump into that. So for this project, I've chosen to use Debian 11 Bullseye because it has all of the packages I need already in the repository, so I don't have to build anything from source. When Debian asks for a root password, I usually skip this because I like using sudo instead of logging in as root. So I elected to not install a desktop environment at all and just install the SSH server. And this is perfectly fine because this is going to run as an appliance that we're just going to log into remotely in the future. Okay, now it tells us it's time to reboot the new system. So we're going to reboot, and from now on we're going to use SSH. So we got the system booted back up. I got the RTLSDR plugged in, and we are ready to go. So thanks to Debian Bullseye for merging the RTL433 package, we actually just have to install that. That's it. I have a previous set of instructions on my blog where I used to build it from source, but that's not necessary anymore. So we sudo apt update, and we're going to install RTL 433. The package has a dash in it, even though the executable name has an underscore. So you see it's got a lot of dependencies it wants to install, because it's installing libRTLSDR and a number of things that that requires. So let's go. So that's it. Done. So now if I run RTL underscore 433, oh, we need sudo for this. RTL underscore 433. It should start finding things. So by default, it's going to pick whatever SDR receiver it finds. So if you have more than one, you'll have to change the command line arguments to pick the right one. And it says it registered 145 out of 175 device protocols. And so it's going to decode those 145 different types of devices. So you can see here we got some readings in. 
we got a Accurite 609 TXC. Those are going to be mine. And then if I scroll up a bit, it found an Accurite Tower, which is not mine. So one of my neighbors must have some sort of weather station that's reporting temperature and humidity. You can see it's pretty cold out today. And you'll see there's more than, there's in this case, there's four readings from the same sensor. And that's because the, the data integrity in 433 megahertz with this type of encoding is not very good. So to hopefully get the messages through, the devices are just sending the same message four times in a row. Uh, which is why it shows up here four times. And here, one of them must have gotten lost from the tower because we only got three from the tower. Which again, is not mine, it's one of my neighbors, so this works at pretty long range. So now that we know that the whole system is working, we're able to decode things, we found our sensors, now we need to get it sending data to MQTT so we can get it into Home Assistant. And if you don't like using MQTT, you could just stop here, the system works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play with the command line arguments, get it to send data to my MQTT server. So for me, the command that I used was RTL PF433, so SI units, and the output is going to you can give user and password here, and I'm going to leave that out just for the purpose of this video. So now it's running and it's connected to MQTT. So let's hop over to MQTT Explorer and see what we can find. So here's a bit of view of what it looks like in MQTT Explorer. So by default, it's going to publish to a topic called RTL433, followed by the host name of the device. So Zeus is my primary server, and Radio Server is the server I've set up for this video. If we go into here, there's going to be a folder called Devices, followed by a folder for each type of device. In this case, the Accurite 609TXC is the device that I'm using. And then there's two folders for subdevice IDs. In this case, it found ID3 and ID252. And under each one, there's a topic for each of the fields. So in this case, temperature Celsius is the field, humidity is the field. It also found an Accurite tower here. And this is the reason why I don't recommend using the Home Assistant Auto Discovery script, although it does work perfectly fine. Because when you use 433 megahertz devices, you're going to find a huge variety of random stuff show up every now and then. And I prefer to just manually add and edit the few devices that I have instead of having a whole bunch of random entities show up in Home Assistant because some car drove by with tire pressure monitoring sensors that were blasting out their pressure. So now that we know what the command line we want is, and you can obviously change the command line you're using. This is the command line I just used for the example. Um, now that we know what the command line is, except for the sudo, we want to make a script so that this can run automatically through system D. Because we want this to run on boot, we want this to auto restart, nice things like that. So we're going to create a systemd service file for RTL433. So first we're going to touch the file. Etsy systemd system, and I'm going to call it RTL433 with no spaces and no dashes. RTL433.service. Now we need to give it permissions. 664. And finally, we need to edit it. So here is the script example for my website. It's a basic systemd service script. So you give it a description, so when it boots up, it'll say, like, starting RTL433 SDR receiver daemon. And it has to start after network online. And then here we have exec start. So this is where you put the command line you found earlier. But we need the absolute path to RTL433. And if you install that from a package, it's going to be in user bin. And if you installed it by compiling it, it'll be in user local bin. And then we have the rest of the arguments that you just used when you tested it out. And then the rest of it just says to restart the service if it crashes, and to install it when we run the system in multi-user mode. And so to start the service, because we created a new service file, we have to tell systemd to reload its service daemons. So we do that by doing system control daemon reload. And then we can start the service. And if we want it to start on boot, we can enable it. And now to see the command line output of the status, we can do system control status. So we can see here in the status, it shows the last few lines of the log file. 
In this case, it shows MQTT connected. The service is active. So we're all good. So I let this sit for just a few hours, and you can see all the junk I found. So I have the Accurite 609 TXC, that's my sensor, and I found two of them, which are mine. We found the Accurite tower, we're getting pretty good reception from this, wherever it is, I don't know whose it is. And we found some other devices that popped up occasionally. So someone has a DSC security sensor that's reported back at least a couple of times. A Springfield soil sensor, don't know what that is. And two tire pressure monitoring sensors have been reporting their pressure a lot too. So this is why I manually configure my devices in Home Assistant instead of relying on auto configuration, even though it's possible. So this is basically my configuration in Home Assistant. It's pretty simple. I'm just using the MQTT sensor and pulling the data for temperature and humidity out as it comes. It's not that hard to write in YAML. So hopefully you enjoyed my video on RTL433 and installing it on this Dell Wise 3040 Thin Client. The RTL433 website has a lot of great resources on what sensors they support, and I've linked down below some good helpful guides to help you pick out what sensors you would like or see if any sensors you already have might work. A common thread here is that this protocol is used in a lot of really low-end consumer devices, but just because they're low-end doesn't necessarily mean they won't work for you. I've had these Accurite sensors running for over a year on the same set of batteries and still going fine. They've survived the harsh outdoor conditions being zip-tied to my backlight and are not worse for wear. So I know I don't do a lot of software-defined radio, but I'd like to get more into that topic. It's something that interests me personally. So if you have any good project ideas with software-defined radio, especially if they're low bandwidth enough to use the RTL-SDR, I'd love to hear them. And you can put them in the comments down below or message me on Discord. Discord's also down in the description below. And as always, See you on the next adventure. The single most important thing is called a software defined radio. I'm busy recording, buddy. I'm busy recording. Yeah. Yeah. And let the computer process it and figure out what it means. And that means. The data rates are very, oh god. Ugh. Trying to record video here. Yeah. Okay, can you get off the table now? Please? Can you please get off the table? Okay, we're gonna pick you up. Oh, and you're not gonna be picked up, are you? <laughs> it's like you know what I'm doing here. Come on. Can you get off the table. Trying to film here.